Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hunt, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, the Hunter. Welcome back to the Baseball Hunt. Hopefully you like this video and hit that subscribe button. This video is going to be in three parts. The first part will be about the Chicago Cubs series that the Mets had. It was a, a, a very easy going series of the night thing on uh, Sunday night. Then the second part will be a bunch of rumors about all these different uh, starting pitchers that the Mets are looking to trade. Uh, or could be trading at the, at the MLB deadline. And the third part of this video will be about the New York Yankees. The Mets will be playing the, the Yankees on Tuesday. A two-game series, and we'll cover that in this video. So the Mets won two out of three at Wrigley Field this past weekend in a three-game series against the Cubs. Uh, highlighted by several things, but obviously we'll get to the, the big thing that, that happened in this series. But the Mets first, won the first game of the series against the Cubs. They absolutely destroyed the Cubs. First game of the series was highlighted by the Mets' offense completely destroying the Cubs in the first four innings of the game. Mets scored 11 runs to the Cubs, one run. J.D. Martinez continues to hit for this team and continues to be a real good leader for the Mets. He uh, uh, got a home run in the first inning, a three-run homer with four RBIs during the game. Uh, the Mets' offense was really great for the first part of that game. Uh, another player that was a highlight of the game was Jose Iglesias, the veteran player who had been, you know, in the minor leagues and didn't play last year, uh, went four for five in the game. Uh, the Mets really just just bulldozed themselves all over the Cubs on Friday, and they had a lot of great offensive performance. Brandon Nimmo was another player to highlight in this game. Uh, Jose Quintana pitched well. Once he got the lead, he kept the lead, and that Cub that Cub pit offense is just not very good. That line was not good at all. In the second game, uh, Tyler McGill gave up six runs in three innings, gave up five runs in the first inning, and the Mets were behind the game right off the bat. And the Mets really didn't have much of a chance to get their offense going, and they lost that game 8-1. to one. Tyler McGill is, is basically on, is holding on for dear life with his job. He's not going to be in, uh, with the Mets, in the Mets starting rotation uh, too much longer. Uh, I would mention that after the Mets play the Yankees, they will be playing... 17 days, 17 games, and that'll take us to the All-Star break. So he might be in the rotation to the end of the, until the end of this break, but um, there's a possibility he might get taken out of the rotation, but we'll, I'll let you know. And then in the third game, the Mets had some very good offensive performances from uh, Francisco Lindori, the two-run home run in the third inning. Then we had Brandon Nimmo hit a home run uh, right after that back-to-back -back then in the fifth inning, Mark Fientes, who's been very quiet of late, uh, has been kind of sort of taking a dip as as uh, everyone else has been hitting really well. He has not been hitting nearly as well, but he absolutely crushed the ball. The dead center field at Wrigley Field hit, hit 451 feet from dead center. Uh, Luis Severino pitched the game last night, went six innings, struck out 10 batters, did not walk a batter. It was one of the few times in his career, I think maybe five or six times, in his career, where he did not give up a home run, did not give up a walk, and struck out ten batters. He was awesome last night. Uh, the highlight at bat was the twelve pitch at bat he had against Cody Bellinger in the sixth inning, and that was really the game, just in terms of the offensive standpoint. Uh, once Bellinger didn't get a hit, and and you know, um, Severino struck him out. Once he struck him out, that was that was the ball game for the Cubs. From the, from the lineup st standpoint. Now, later on in the seventh inning, Christopher Morell had a two-run home run against the Daniel Nunez. But pretty much the, the offense for the Cubs was kaput in this game. They, it's just not a very good lineup, even though they scored eight runs on Saturday. <clears throat> now, the ninth inning. Uh, the big story in the ninth inning was that the Mets, uh, Edwin Diaz came into the game, ready to close the game out, and Major League Baseball... Checked to see if he had any foreign substances in his hand. They found that the hand was too sticky. Now, this is a very strange situation because seven pitchers have been basically thrown out of games in Major League Baseball, and three of them in the last two years have been New York Mets. It is my belief, and I think a lot of people believe this, that the Mets have been targeted by Major League Baseball. They've been targeted by the umpires. We've, we've, we've chronicled it for many, many years on this channel, talking about how Major League Baseball hate the Mets for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because of Steve Cohen or just in general, they like this narrative of a team 
that is, you know, they don't do anything right. They, you know, it's all, it's all just a mess. Or they didn't want to create that. Uh, I was sort of reminded of this earlier about Joe Musgrove. Joe Musgrove, as you know, pitched that one hitter against the Mets in the, in the NL uh, wild card game two years ago. And we all could tell, I mean, just on TV, that guy was all, so greased up. His ears were all greased up. <clears throat> you know, why is he looking greasy? Never got thrown out. No discipline. And now the Mets are going to be... So there's like a double standard here. And now after that, they obviously implemented this thing last year. But this year. Now the Mets have a problem. And that's what uh, Edwin Diaz is all likelihood as I record this video. It hasn't come down. Uh, he's going to get suspended 10 games. The Mets cannot replace his spot on the roster for the next 10 days. So they're going to go... 10 days with 25 men on the roster and a guy on the in the bullpen short. And their main guy in the bullpen. He's the Mets' best player, and they're not going to have him for, for 10 days. This takes him out of the out of the running against the Yankees, the Astros, the Nationals, and the Pirates when the Mets go on the road next week. <clears throat> That's 10 of the 17, 10 of the 19 games that the Mets play before the All-Star game. They will be without their best player. And um, it, it's just quite uh, disgusting that Major League Baseball keeps targeting the Mets over and over and over again. Why they do that? You have to ask them, but of course they'll they'll deny it. But as fans, we see it. <clears throat> you know, you, you can't say, well, the Mets are the only team doing it. We know other players are doing this. We know other pitchers are doing this, but they're just not getting caught. Well, you know, now, Diaz says his hand's always like that. I can't tell you if Diaz's hand, uh, is that's a natural look. I couldn't tell you because this is the first time they zoomed in on a pitcher's hand uh, in, in that situation. But this is a very annoying thing that we deal with as Mets fans. It's difficult enough to see the team play the way they do sometimes. But then to have the league come down on them, to have umpires come down on them, just, you know, just a nilly dilly and just sort of as, a, as an afterthought. But, all right. Now, here's the next part of this video. Three trade destinations for the starting pitchers the Mets are reportedly willing to deal. First up, let me read this article from uh, Rising Apple. Let's go. Let's do this. Number one, Dave Stearns might be pulling some trade deadline trickery this summer by selling a starting pitcher while also looking to compete for a playoff spot. The idea the Mets trading Luis Severino feels unacceptable. Sean Manaya is someone many of us would be more open to. Jose Quintana would have volunteers for drivers. All three veterans are inspiring contracts with Manaya, possessing a player option for next year. Candidates to get moved. The Mets are willing, are truly willing to subtract one, also hoping to compete for a wild card spot. It's these three teams who make the most sense. Let's do this. Importantly, none of the three on this list would face the Mets in the postseason until a possible World Series match. Let's send guys to the American League. Okay. First up, first up, Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles actually have one of the better starting staffs in MLB this season. Anchored by Corbin Burns at the top, their problem has been keeping guys healthy. John Means and Tyler Wells were already lost for the year. Kyle Brash was the latest to join them. That hasn't stopped the Orioles from winning and making New York Yankee New York Yankees fans sweat. From top to bottom, this feels like a team that could win it all. I predicted that they would play the, the Phillies in the World Series. Some starting pitching reinforcements, however, might be necessary to get through the last three months of the season. The best fit for Baltimore is probably Severino, whose upside and familiarity with the American League must have some sort of advantage. Severino pitching against the Cubs instead of his former Yankees club this week. Surely disappointed for everyone. This includes the Orioles, who would probably like to know what he could do against their biggest competition. Then again, the Yankees not getting a chance to look at Severino might work to everyone's advantage. In either case, the Orioles probably don't want a Quintana, but Naya might be someone they'd consider. Severino is a match for the Orioles. Another destination, the Minnesota Twins. The Twins will need a little more to push further Push themselves, push themselves further to contention. They don't have a truly electric offense, and their starting pitching, the starting rotation is underachieved outside of Joey Ryan, Simeon Woods, Richardson. Twins could use an upgrade or at least some more starting pitching depth. 
Pablo Lopez and Chris Paddock haven't been sharp. Bailey over their weakest starter with minor league options would end up as the casualty if Minnesota did add at the trade deadline and deal with the Mets for a starting pitcher. Quintana would actually be a bit of an upgrade for them and would give the Twins a lefty starter, which they lack. Quintana instead of Ober might not be too prosperous. Quintana has pitched in plenty of big games in the past. He might not have the nastiness of stuff, but the experience is something the Twins starters lack. Of course, if the Twins are a match for Quintana, they'd also be one for Manaya, who happens to draw from the left side as well. Either one could be a candidate for the Twins in an attempt to secure a playoff spot. The Cleveland Guardians, the next team, not much in the U.S. is north of Minnesota. In the American League Central, Minnesota does have to look upward to find the Cleveland Guardians. Despite being without Shane Bieber for the season, the Guardians are once again playoff contenders on a team it seems to defy preseason expectations many have. Starting pitching, however, is a major strength for this ball club. Ben Lively has posted the best numbers for them, as the club relies on an elite bullpen centered on closer Emmanuel Classe to win games. The staff still includes Carlos Carrasco, who looked finished with the Mets last year. Quite frankly, has been eight, hasn't been much better this year with a 5.40 ERA. Any of the three Mets starting pitching pitcher trade candidates would improve the guards' rotation over him. Considering the team they are and the financial constraints, it required the Mets to get a portion of the salary. Of the three pitchers the Mets could move, this might be the destination for Manaya. The big complaint about him is his inability to last long. Well, that isn't as major of an issue in Cleveland, where the bullpen carries the load. But them and any other team would interested in Manai, the player option for next year could help or hurt his case. $13.5 million, $13 million for next season would be a bargain compared to many of his peers. The Guardians tend to prefer cheaper alternatives. The only active player making more than $7 million is Jose Ramirez. A little creativity might be the only way to get a deal done with them. But Miles Straw and his $13 million plus owed involved to get offset some money and a trade could get hammered out with some patience. So. Now finally in this video we're going to talk about the New York Yankees. The Mets are playing the Yankees on Tuesday and on Wednesday in a two-game series at City Field. The Mets have played really well and the Yankees have not played nearly as well over the last two weeks. Uh, three of the last three series the Yankees have lost. They've, they've gone three and six against uh, a couple of their rivals. And, and the Braves. So they went, they lost two out of three in Boston. They lost two out of three against Baltimore at Yankee Stadium. And then they lost two out of three to the Braves. Um, they're dealing with some injuries now. Uh, they, they had an injury scare to Juan Soto. That there might be some issue with his elbow, his left elbow. There was a lot of fear that he, that he might have done something to it. That he might have uh, torn the elbow. You know, might have needed, but... They said it was just a bit of a just a strain, I guess. Um, but they don't have Anthony Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo broke his forearm in a collision with former Met Dom Smith. So they don't have a first baseman right now. That is a veteran player. They have um, Ben Rice, and he they they recalled him. And he's a prospect, but they recalled him from Triple A. Also, didn't know and hadn't done a video on it. Though it was amusing. I didn't even mention it. The Yankees made a trade with the A's, and they picked up. Former Met, J.D. Davis, former Met, former A, former San Francisco Giant, former Houston Astros, now with the Yankees. And the and the base league is going to play him against lefties. So in all likelihood, we'll probably see him play against the Mets uh, this week. Uh, the Mets are going to be sending two lefties. But the Yankees are, are in a lot of trouble because uh, they've had injuries starting to pop up with the club. Also, Giancarlo Stanton, who had been hitting really well, been hitting a lot of home runs. He's been driving the ball. He's been, you know, his average has been really good. He again is hurt again. And he's got a, a hamstring issue, and the Yankees put him on the injured list. And aside from Aaron Judge, this offense and Juan Soto, you could pitch to them. It's not a great offense. Gleyber Torres <clears throat> is a guy that has been their second baseman for a few years. Has not had a good year, and he's not popular with the Yankee fans. Um, it's a very, aside from Judge and Soto, it's a very pedestrian, if not a lousy offensive group. Uh, 
Teams are running like crazy on the catching, on the catchers. And I would mention the Mets picked up Luis Torrens from the Yankees for $100,000, and he's played really well for the Mets. He can throw runners out. So the Yankees made a big mistake letting him go for really for just $100,000. Um, you know, the offense for the Yankees isn't great. Now, I would mention the Yankee pitching. <clears throat> and his second start, Jared Cole, will be, or will be starting on Tuesday against the Mets' David Peterson. Uh, a couple of things. He pitched okay the first start, but the Yankees didn't win that game. But he is coming back, and he is the, the reigning Cy Young Award winner in the American League. David Peterson is pitching for the Mets. The Mets shifted their rotation to put Luis Severino to pitch on Sunday and Peterson to pitch on Tuesday. He pitches, has very good numbers against Juan Soto, which I learned last night in the live stream. So the, he is a guy that has pitched really well for the, for, against the Yankees at times. And then on Tuesday, the Mets going to throw out uh, Sean Manaya. He's going up against Luis Gill, who has pitched really well up until his last start. But he might be on a limiting, uh, an innings limit because he's coming back from I think, Tommy John surgery uh, with the, you know, from the last year or two. So he is sort of on an innings limit. And he hit kind of a wall his last start. He got basically, you know, I think the Orioles just beat the hell out of him. Uh, they scored a lot of runs early, and he was out of that game by the third inning. So he's coming back. And the Mets obviously have been a very hot team. Uh, but he's a good pitcher, and he's pitched really well. Up until that start, a lot of people have been talking about him as the leading candidate for the Cy Young in the American League. But, obviously, he has uh, a lot of talent. He's pitched really well for the Yankees. So this is kind of the preview of the series against the, against the Yankees. And obviously, the biggest thing with the Mets is not going to have Edwin Diaz for this series. They will, however, have everybody else. Everybody else is hitting really well. Uh, we'll see how Peterson pitches. We'll see how Manaya pitches. Manaya has to pitch better than he has. He has to get ahead in the count. And same thing with David Peterson. They're going to get ahead in the count. They'll give up home runs. And they should be in good shape. But um, these games are not easy, obviously. It's going to be a lot of energy in the ballpark. It's great to see that the Mets have picked up their, their play. The Mets are two games under 500 now. Uh, hopefully, they at least split the series. They'll come out of the two games, you know, above, you know, two games under 500. And, of course, I would mention that after that, the Mets will play the Astros. And we'll have a preview on the Astros series. And the Astros have actually played very well over the last few weeks after being in the in the in the downs for the first two months. But let me know what you think about this video. Of course, please let me know what you thought about the situation with Edwin Diaz. Let me know what you think about all these potential trades with this the starting pitching of Luis Severino, Jose Quintana, and Sean Manaya. Are they gonna go to these different teams? Are they good fits for the Mets? And of course, let me know what you think about the Yankee series that's coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'll have it all covered here for you. This is the best Mets channel on YouTube. Also, if you're not on Twitter, if you're not on Facebook, and any other social media platform, hit the subscribe button for the baseball hit. This is, this, I will get you every little tidbit. You will be on the forefront of things that is going on with the New York Mets. I am way ahead of the curve when it comes to what's going on with this ball club. So thank you for watching this video, and of course, please subscribe to Baseball Hut, and I'll see you later.